Hello and welcome to the last game of the evening for Star Ladder Season 5, day number 2. We've got ourselves a game between 3D Clan, formerly known Ice Climbers, with uh, of course uh, some very known names in there. And we have got them up against Mouse Sports, the team uh, with um, the history as in uh, the team that's been together for a while already. Hasn't, uh, or has have performed very stable yes. constantly and we're gonna see Mouse maybe a silencer Ooh, I'm hoping for it uh, as it, I don't want to see I want to see a solo mid silencer there you have it I said it I've seen now an aggressive tri-lane silencer on the farming role I've seen a silencer support in a safe tri-lane I want to see a solo mid silencer but uh, let's see if I'm gonna be granted that because mouse sports still are allowed to do one ban. We still have the Nyx in as well as the Darkseer, Ten. Yeah. as well as um, well things like like I mean we haven't really seen them all that often lately, like the Rubik or the Magnus. Well, I actually saw the Magnus earlier today, but um, but yeah, uh, we we have the Magnus. There we have the Magnus. 3D Clan picks up the Magnus. They ban out the Wisp and the Cuddle, and we have the Nyx in the bed rather being banned out by mouse sports. So Magnus, the first hero to be picked up by 3D Clan, and I'm hoping that we're gonna see him in the mid lane there. Also, already, of course, now already determining a, what kind of game they want to have. We are gonna have a Darkseer and a Gyrocopter pick up by Mouse Sports, so we're probably gonna see an off laning Darkseer and an aggressive tri lane. I hope with the Gyrocopter and then a safe laning Life Seeder or something like that. But no, they cannot do that. I mean, we know that Mouse Sports love their Life Seeder. But uh, they're being denied it no right now. 3D Clan picking it up together with the Rubik in the lineup, and that's going to be their support and their carry already sorted. They're already giving away a bit about what they're going to do with their lanes right now. Mouse Sports, now their life stealer has been denied. They have to rethink something else. Actually, they might just pick up a Klinks instead, would also be a good one to have. And I'm, I'm basically expecting an aggressive tri lane and then Ten seconds remaining. dark seer mid or something you can also dark seer on the safe lane Five and then a different mid lane remaining. you can to can be mid they have a lot of options it's just silencer yay silencer okay let's hope silencer is mid you know what all the theory now that's not, that's bad i could say like all the theory crafting i'm doing from now is gonna be assuming silencer is mid but that would just be awkward uh, we're gonna decide on what he's gonna do based on what uh what mouse sports is gonna be picking up because it, and yeah, it's gonna be very tough also for 3D Clan to expect what Mouse Sports wants to do with the lineup. I mean, Gyrocopter, we've seen him on aggressive tri lanes, oh, we've seen him as supports, we've seen him as solo Radiant mid lanes. Darkseer, we've seen him as solo off lane, solo mid lane, solo short lane. Silencer, we've seen him on mul multiple roles as well. It's very hard to determine what are you gonna ban out against Mouse Sports right now. Uh, they decide to ban out the Brewmaster. Uh, so a bit of team fight banned out right there, and of course that's also a hero that when he gets level six, he will have that big impact on the game. With now a Chen being banned out by Mouse ban. Sports, don't want to be having uh, having that one. If you're gonna have a life and a Rick farming with a dual lane on the bottom lane, could very well still leave room for that jungle hero. It's gonna be the uh, Venomancer that gets banned out uh, by. 3D clan. I mean, Venomancer is a band that we don't see that often, but right now you might uh, think about it. Venomancer band would be like viable if you're expecting it to be get picked up, duh. But then also to be countering that life stealer because that gale still slows even if you have if you turn your rage on and the gale is there, you will still be slowed. So it is a nice one to have. Again, semi against life stealer. If it's one thing that life stealer needs, he needs to get to his target and eat the target up. But if he can't get there, you know. That's uh, gonna be trouble. We have got ourselves an Enchantress ban out. We still have the Enigma in, by the way. It was actually a Vengeful Spirit that got banned out by Mouse Sports. Another support being banned out that normally doesn't see the light of day. At least, uh, not being not in the draft, not in the banning pool. A vision to the last Shrek. support they're gonna ban out, but they pick up a Lashrak. Life Seal Lashrak, Rubik Lane. We've seen it before, it can be aggressive, could be safe, uh, whichever they prefer. But there is a Telekinesis followed up by Split Earth, the open wounds to set stuff up as well. It's a very strong lane and it's very dangerous to be up against that. But we still don't know yet what Mouse Sports is gonna do with their lineup. So it will just depend on who is gonna be picking up what, I guess, when, uh, when they have their entire lineup ready. And if they are expecting an aggressive trial-in, or if they're, f if they're expecting a safe trial-in, if they want to do an aggressive trial-in themselves. Five seconds remaining. 
It's uh, it's all possible, and they pick up the phases void. Well, that kind of opens things up a bit, or well, no, it actually closes things because now we know that Black is gonna be playing the phases void, and he is gonna be farming. He could actually be farming by himself on the top lane, on uh, the safe lane for them, and then have an aggressive tri lane still on the bottom lane. Could be in theory true. Could have the Garrocopter now mid silencer as a support, unfortunately, then and Darkseer on the off lane. And that could be, uh, that's probably why we have a Garrocopter support and silencer mid. Let's hope that one. Ten. Okay, five so we'll last pick up for 3D clan. It's gonna be, uh, they will gonna be an off laner. Gonna be something that can either solo lane mid or can solo lane off lane. So we have got a lot of options to win. Queen of Pain is to win. Windrunner, Beastmaster, Puck, you name it, they are in. Even the Tidehunter, if they want to go like full team fight, but I don't think that's gonna be happening. But you know, they're, they're just to say, there's there is really a lot of options and uh, right now it's gonna come down to what do you want to do you want to have that roar to shut down the faces void or do you want to have a shackle to try and uh, and just get some more grip on the game mid game do you want to have the silence countering silencer silence perhaps if you can initiate good enough Well, what is it gonna be? They have 40 seconds left into their bonus time. If you're wondering, by the way, my mouse sport doesn't have any bonus time, it's because they actually lost some of their mouse bonus time. And I have to please wait. I'm looking into the light, but it's not happening. <sighs> okay, I didn't have to sneeze after all. So Tiny is picked up, so that means that we're probably gonna see Tiny mid Magnus offlane. And then, uh, well, in, in, my, in theory, if Rubik or Lashrak could be mid as well. I mean, Tiny Lashrak could be a dual lane, Rubik, Lifestealer could be a dual lane, and Magnus could Ten be a solo lane. There is just, there's a lot of options. Did I say 3D Max? I meant 3D Clan. Damn remaining. it, I'm gonna make that mistake more often. Sand King. Sand King. I love it. I love Sand King being picked up. We haven't seen enough of him lately, or at least I haven't. But he is great together with uh, Faces Void. Um, because if you have a good a good chronosphere, you can actually a good chronosphere with a vacuum. He is great with a lot of heroes, actually. You can actually uh, blink burst strike epicenter into the chronosphere. Even if you get stunned, the epicenter will still go through your enemies. It's pretty damn nice to see. And the dark seer there, of course, as well, is uh, with the vacuum into epicenter, with the vacuum into burst strike, with the vacuum into the into the curse. I I, li I kind of like mouse sports uh, lineup. I'm cu curious to see how they're gonna be using that. We see Father already picking up the Garrocopter, so he is probably be taking on that mid lane on him. And that means uh, we're gonna Ten see uh, a silencer support. Five seconds remaining. I don't like silencer support. We just saw a silencer support. I want new silencers. Okay, I shouldn't complain though. <laughs> like at the start of the casting this night, I just had um, I want to see more silencers, and the first game was actually banned out. But uh, yeah, that was of course. Uh, I mean, I shouldn't complain. There, there, we have seen silencers. What more can I wish for, right? Still no solo mid silencer though. Hopefully we're still gonna see that. So let's see who's, who's uh, gonna be playing what. We still are waiting for Mouse to pick up their heroes. But until then, uh, we can go over 3D Clan where uh, Dread Seam is getting ready. Dread himself is playing the Lashrak. It will be Solo who's gonna be playing the Rubik Nexus, playing the Life Stealer Sharfik on his Tiny. And we see Lolik playing the Magnus. So that will indeed be Sharfik going mid on the Tiny. Um, he might be supported though. As in, he might be having two dual lanes still. Could be with anyone. Apart from the life seeder or the the Magnus, that's all the lanes that we at least know. We just don't know yet where the supports are gonna go. I mean, in theory, they could even roam around trying to get kills. They have a lot of options, so we can't really say anything yet about the items they're picking up. Apart from the life seeder, picked up a shield. Other than that, nothing yet. But it might get pulled also. I mean, we'll we'll find out. But uh, yeah, the pause was too fast for them to pick up any extra items. So far, we gotta have Fada playing the Garrocopter. Will be Black playing the Faces Void. Past will be playing the Dark Seer. And that will leave the silencer up for grabs together with the Sand King. Sand King probably played by Kuroki with then the silencer being played by Pass. Uh, yeah, no, not Pass, sorry. Uh, being played by... Wow, who am I missing here? That was bad. By Alex, of course. So silencer by Alex or Kuroki. 
uh, silencer and then they just split it up. I mean, it doesn't really, uh, I don't really know which one of them plays the silencer, but I think they both can play the Sand King, so. And that is, uh, that is the case of this game. By the way, by the way, by the way, so, as you might have know, as you might know, I have moved and I'm happy to inform you that my internet seems super stable. Boom. And again, I realized I forgot to do commercials. Damn it. That's not good. That's not good. Oh well. Oh well. We got to do the same thing yet the same thing yesterday as well. Oh well. Anyway, for now, everybody go on top because that's the oh. I think they kind of, um, hmm, communication is key. By the way, this means Judge Dread, I believe, I've been told. But yeah, they've got two couriers, because they can. We don't really see who owns them, do we? Nope. I do like that one, though. It's cute. Anyway, five heroes, top. Gonna be 3D, I just got all of them 3D. Gonna be 3D going top. And they're gonna be running into some people here. Black and Alex are here. Oh, toss in! Whoa! Thirty seconds. <laughs> Lexus didn't know how fast they're gonna get out. It makes me wonder: Are these players sober? Like you can imagine how this goes. Uh, someone buys a courier and pops up a um, a donkey, and then someone says, "No, I want to get the other courier. I'll just buy one for myself." And then he buys one for himself to still have the dread courier. We'll see which one gets used so that we know. I mean, two couriers could actually be on purpose. If you want to bottle crow constantly, you just have one courier crowing mid lane. That could be potential. I mean, don't get me wrong. There could actually be something. I mean, it might not be a mistake. I have to warn for that. But we'll find out. We'll find out. Oh, Kuroki being found. He's actually gonna play the Silencer and the Telekinesis. They're gonna come up. There's Split Earth as well. And this should be the first blood go on the way of 3D. Curse still goes off. Doesn't matter though. Nice gank. Nice, uh, nice positioning from 3D. And they're gonna go for more Fada being uh, rest away from his lane. So like I said, they, they had the possibility to have these two roaming and that might actually what they were trying to do. We have got a Lifestealer solo top for now. He's gonna be in an aggressive tri lane soon probably. Uh, mid lane is going to be for the tiny on the sh on Sharpik, who's going to be up against indeed Fada on the Gyrocopter. On the bottom lane, we will have Pass playing the Dark Seer up against the Magnus, so that's a fairly safe lane for both of them. As uh, we will have, of course, uh, Alex then on the Sand King, Kuroki supporting on the Silencer, and Black on the Phantom's Void. So this is indeed tri lane versus tri lane, and two solo lanes of the other lanes. And let's see, uh, there's no Kuroki being used just yet. They're standing at the ready, though. Ready to sprint for it. Curse is being used, forcing their opponents to, uh, to well, use their mana. I actually, I mean, previous game we saw Silencer up with an aggressive trial as well, but this one, Kuroki is being a bit more aggressive than the other one was. So I'm, I'm actually liking that. Seeing if that's uh, gonna be, uh, gonna be making a difference. No bottle yet on Sharfik. Needs just uh, two more creeps, and we'll then get it. And we'll be using a courier for that, and we'll see then which one's gonna get used. If it's gonna be the donkey, then we know how it went. Ah. Uh, uh, we'll find out, we'll find out. Curses everywhere. It's very annoying to be cursing uh, on life zero as well because he, his abilities, they just, they, they just cost, uh, cost quite a bit of mana, com well, if you compare it to how much money he has. Having said that, the level 1 curse is not something that in general, if you're playing a pub, you should use mana for because you won't get burnt by that much. And that's the first courier. It is indeed the donkey, but he is just going to bottle crow that. So that indeed means that it's going to be an on purpose, on purpose courier. As the other one has already got upgraded, so indeed it is not an accident. My bad. I shouldn't expect people to make an, uh, a mistake like that at this level, I have to say. Though. But that is going to be two couriers. One oh, nice curse. One just to make sure that there is always, always going to be mana for Sharfik. Always going to be a courier to bottle crow that. He's just gonna run back and forth and back and forth until his tiny legs ache because he's not gonna get upgraded for now. He's getting upgraded though. He's also bottom crowing bottom lane, bottom crowing everywhere. In the meantime, the harassment on the top lane comes more seems to be coming more from Mouse than from uh, from 3D. I mean, they they have the aggressive tri lane and yes, they have Nexus farming. Okay. 
And that was a misclick from someone. Dire structures fortified, but that's okay. They won't need it just yet, I think. Unless the Lashrak with the level 1 edict might be able to do something. We'll see. But yeah, bottle crows everywhere. Everywhere. Constantly. And again, they're just continuing doing it. We have in the meantime Fada, he left his lane, he's got himself a haste room, got himself a full bottle. Might be trying to do something here. And decides to back off, actually. Decides to back off. One K gold but life seeder already. I mean the thing about the turn is if you don't shut down your opponent, they're they're gonna get ahead. Because they have the lane with th that also has the creeps. An aggressive trailing, you have to try to also get kills, otherwise you won't be able to win your aggressive trailing. And if you're gonna go for an aggressive trailing, you are there to win the lane. That's your goal. Or at least make sure your opponent doesn't have that much farm. But Black still got 19 last hits. 20 last hits now on Nexus, so this is still fairly even. As, um, well, of course, they're nice curses, completely. Still have one curse only, though. Uh, Gabriel Copter Invisibility Rune might actually try to go for something, but we're gonna follow this first. It's gonna be black, it's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Half the time lapse, uh, time lapse away right now. One more hit, open wounds, and time lapse not in time. Dread picking up the kill. Can they go for more? Kuroki gonna get some harassment here, but they're t t tuning to Alex first. He, is, of course, has got a sandstorm, but it doesn't matter. He will still go down. Edict doing tons of damage. Only one creep around to tank that up. Nice split earth. Still hits on Kuroki. Can they get that one as well? No, they cannot, because here comes Black again. That's two kills going away of 3D. And I'm sorry if I just called them 3D Max again. I might have actually done that. But um, 3D got themselves three kills now in total on the top lane. I can count the silencer going down at, at the start also for them. I mean, they have got a okay lane right now. With those kills, they will be pulling ahead. What I was checking earlier though was uh, actually that didn't turn out to be a kill. So that's okay. Yeah. So um, in the meantime, Tiny is 11 for 4. His last hits are not that amazing. Fada 27 for 6. That's a, big, that's a big difference. That is indeed a big difference. But Tiny is still getting some farm and he is getting levels, which is probably more important for him right now than anything else. I mean, Garacopter is getting the farm, yeah. But Tiny can do a lot more with the levels than. than uh, uh, early game than the than that guy can the guy helicopter. In the meantime, top lane is being left alone for now. Lifestealer playing it pretty ballsy, kind of making Mouse give the idea that he still has supports around him. But the supports are actually uh, roaming around a bit. We have Solo who went towards the mid lane, checking if or towards the rune spot perhaps to check if someone was there. Lashrak standing around as well. Dread. Probably gonna go smoke up or try to go for an opening. They don't actually have a smoke, so they'll just try to look for an opening on the top lane. Maybe they can go for telekinesis again. If they can kill off black again, that's that's massive. Invisibility rune again activated by Garacopter, but this time we know that nothing's gonna happen and we know that we don't wanna miss anything top. It's gonna be a nice split earth, but it misses. Burrow strikes away on solo though. Kuroki will still drop solo, still alive for now. Edict doing massive amounts of damage. Again, they don't have the creep wave to help tank that up for Mouse Sports. Call down coming down now also. Fada able to get the kill on the Rubik. Able to force the rest back. Burrow strike will clean out Dread. Now Nexus on the run will be able to escape. And he st with that coming in of Fada, he saves his team. It was only Kuroki that dropped, but that is worth getting two kills in return for. Actually, having said that, I'm not 100% sure about that because they did use some time for the uh, Garacopter and it was actually Titan that got some free farm with this, so it's not all bad for 3D. And they didn't lose Nexus, so the, the carry is still alive, still here. Still farming, just like Black though, I mean he's farming as well. The farm of the two is still, uh, still fairly even, so no real difference there. As uh, There is of course, uh, well it's gonna be the one who's get level 5 to level 6 first who's gonna be uh, having a fun time. Especially if it's gonna be the face's void. Cause that Chronosphere is definitely not to be messed with. The Sharpic Trouble will be going down here, but Luxfit still gets a kill on the fun Kuroki though before he dies. At least he gets something. But Fada still picking up his second kill of the game. In the meantime, on the top lane, Black getting chased down. Do they have something more? Split Earth misses. Black has got a time lock in 10 seconds, but he won't make it. Because those 10 seconds are just a bit too long. Nexus picking up the kill. In the meantime, on the bottom lane, the lane that we haven't seen much of just yet. Both of these have not been in action at all just yet. Farm-wise, there's 41 for 1 on the Magnus with 45 for 4 on the Darkseer Pass. And... And Lolik being very even, 
Uh, though one thing has to be said, normally when a Magnus reaches level 6, you'll see him trying to look for that reverse polarity, trying to get a kill with that, but he hasn't been able to do that just yet. They might try to do it now, though. And they get a kill on Puss. There comes the Surge. Avalanche misses. Is there gonna be a reverse polarity? Surge will run out soon. There's a toss in and reverse polarity after that. Nice one. And that is indeed my Puss going down. I do like that. I mean, the reverse polarity seemed to be cast already in the air, and then when it hit, then yeah, that was funny. Oh well. And next is gonna be a harassing phase of four. Tower went down in the meantime. Nothing that Mouse could do against that. 3D clan pulling ahead in this game by the looks of it. Gold graph spiking upwards, but that's the tower going down, and of course the queue on the bottom lane helping out with that as well. Experience graph, just 1k, it's really not that much just yet. In the meantime, with those levels up on Sharpik, we'll make sure that right now he is happy with farm, but he probably wants to uh, wait a second. Oh, I probably wants to uh, get some kills now. But then again, where are you gonna find kills? We have got Genk going on on the top lane by Lucifer, Burrow Strike, and Silence coming Dyer's in. Middle tower is under As in, attack. that is Dyer's Alex and Kuroki. I'm just calling them by their abilities. Fada coming in, he actually went for an excursion bottom a moment ago. Well, cooldown coming down, doesn't matter though, they really he wanted that tower. Tiny actually goes down, Rock Mirage, Sharpik, Trouble, dead, Burrow Strike, leaves him out, and Sand King picking up one last hit and Garak up to the other and that's a buyback from the Tiny. Are they want to fight this? Yes they do. Another support coming in. Buyback from the Shrek as well. Avalanche misses though. Thought of trouble. Fade Bolt going through. Can they do more? They do not have an epicenter. Toss back into three. Telekinesis there as well. Two stuns. One on Kuroki. One on Alex. As Alex is gonna try to get away. We have a pause. Because of disconnect on Lifestealer. Oh my god. Where is the Lifestealer? Oh my god. That's, that's bad. That is very bad. 3D, they already got one kill. They're probably gonna lose solo by that rocket barrage, because that hurts. Alex might actually die from a toss, but he still has to wait four seconds for that. Dread has cooled on his abilities, so he can't get anything done just that, just yet. And in the meantime, bottom lane, don't have- well actually, Dark Puss has a TP. There's a reconnect. There we go. Pasco TP in. Rock of Rush actually doesn't kill off solo. Father now in trouble. Edith going off still. Activate and there's the toss and that's a kill. Picking up the Garrocopter rather than picking up Alex as Alex is still on the way out. Might still die though. He's being chased. Nexus on the hunt. Sharfik on the hunt. And he is gonna get an open wounds. Burst strike. It's not there, no mana, open wounds, we'll still be there. Toss is spread first. <laughs> okay, Shepard gets the kill. I was gonna say, when's the open wounds gonna hit? But no, who, why, why slow when you can just toss someone in, right? Oh well. Bottle crows upon bottle crows. Oh look, the donkey got wings! Happy times for him. I do like this, you don't see it that often. Uh, any more? Oh, call down Sharfik. Might be in some trouble getting slowed down there. Avalanche still hits on Fada though. Courier still chasing him. Pass can have a surge still, but surge stop uh, Fada who actually runs away with that one. Home missile still gonna hit on Sharfik, but he's gonna be fine. In the meantime, Nexus is gonna be finding a seas creep inside the jungle. That's an awkward position. Well, it almost looked like that. Courier had two heads, but that he didn't. He's getting blind. Anyway, armlet completed up on life center and it looks to be in some trouble because here comes two. There comes the last word. Burrow strike as well. Corona. Wow. They really want to kill him off, don't they? Please. Yeah, that was kind of convincing. In the meantime, what was also kind of convincing was the combination of the avalanche and the toss and the split earth, or the edict rather, that killed off the Garrocopter in the mid lane. So that happened at the same time. And not a total loss for 3D at least. <laughs> So yeah, I was, what, I, what I was saying is that the uh, the bottle, the double bottle strat uh, with the two couriers, apparently was done a lot in Dota 1. Uh, personally, I didn't follow competitive at all, so I uh, have only been told about that. I don't really see it that often. Fast, gonna try to surge himself away, gonna try to juke this, and uh, Skewer could help out, but they don't know he's TP. Now they know, and now they're too late. Ooh, they actually thought he might still be there. That would have been dangerous. 
But maybe they're gonna get a tower in return at least. I mean, they're so far. Ooh, Telekinesis, Fada, Tubble. That's the reverse polarity of Fada just for him. Cooldown coming down, doesn't matter. Rocket Mirage still hitting though. Fada still alive for now. Open wounds, one more hit needed, one more hit again. There we go, that's a kill. And now Burst like up on Nexus, who's gonna just try to eat up Alex. Shockwave still going through. Vacuum misses everybody. And that's gonna be four heroes on the bottom lane for 3D with also the TP incoming from the Tiny who picked up. Uh, no, no blink there, never mind. My bad. We have got the uh, nice, the curse. But the curse is still level 1, so it doesn't really do that much. Pass is gonna search himself away. Dread getting Burrow's right. His Nova Edict on low is gonna do a lot of damage with uh, Santing already going down. Now Kuroki goes down as well, at least is able to take someone with him as Mouse is gonna, or Pass is gonna try to search himself away. Gets a vacuum. There's a toss still though. Can they get him? Can they still kill him? And they should be able to. They're outnumbering Shockwave from the long range. Lolik picks him up. You should have known better. And they don't get a tower for that yet. And they do get a lot of kills. They have to back off right now though, because Fada comes back in. Home is already hitting up on Nexus. With uh, Solo ready to defend his life. And that missile is gonna hurt, I think. Ah, uh, never mind, he's only level 1. And the rage is actually helping out, of course, as well. He's being, yeah, he's fine. He's fine. But the tower is still not dying. I mean, that was a great fight for 3D, but they didn't get a tower. Top tower is under attack. From that enga engagement, which is quite surprising because... I mean, they definitely won that fight, right? And normally when you win a fight, you want to take something in return. You want to you wanna take a tower, you want to take a Roshan, you know, those kind of things. Barracks even sometimes, but... Yeah. No can do. No can do at all. We have a mechanism being built up by the Magnus. It's quite surprising to see him go for that. Uh, probably because he's going to be the more supportive role as Tiny is now taking on his role as ganking and, and killing stuff. His usefulness is a reverse polarity. And to be fair, who needs a blink dagger if Tiny can touch you in? Right? In the meantime, it looks like Mouse is going to try to take down the first tower on the side of 3D clan. Uh, by the way, wow, I have been slacking with this because of all the action going on. I put on net worth right now for your pleasure. Uh, we have tier 1 tower going down on the bottom lane, by the way, so that will be a trade. Actually, will not be a trade at all. TP coming in. Magnus looking for that reverse player. to going to get it on 2. Here comes Nexus as well. He was infested in there. That's one going down. That's two going down. Father trying to TP out. We'll be able to do so. Nice, gang. Nice. Nice. I like it. I have to say, I mean, I know that a lot of people were expecting Mouse to be uh, to be dominating this game purely because maybe 3D is not that known yet. Um, but you should know them because they have been doing amazingly well in the entire tournament so far. We have to actually, this is actually the second game that we see. Oh well, uh, but they. Um, they do very well, and they have been doing very well in the qualifiers as well, or regulation matches, whichever it was that I saw of them. We've seen them in a lot of um, 4PL Cups. They have won, actually, the last two Cups. So, oh, that was a spoiler alert. I think they're going to compete again in tomorrow's Cup, 4PL Cup. We'll have another one there. But they are doing amazingly well for themselves. So it's definitely one of those teams that you have to watch out for, because they are... They could be the next, you know, champion of something that you want to be uh, memorizing. So you want to know these players, you want to know these names, you want to know how they do, what they do, how they play, who they play, etc. And so far, Mouse, they don't really know how to handle it yet. We have the gold graph going the way of 3D Max, 3D Clan. Wow. If I'm going to make sure that they are going to be more known, then I should stop pronouncing their team name wrong now, shouldn't I? So, <laughs> 3D Clan has got uh, most gold. Pretty simple reasons, though. There is, They are three towers ahead. They are nine kills ahead. And that's just making them have a massive gold difference. Uh, experience difference is also in their favor. Uh, again, that's the kills. You get experience from kills. More kills, more experience. Experience goes the way of 3D. And let's see if they're gonna be able to pick up their first tier 2 tower. It's, it looks like Mouse wants to fight it, so they have got that epicenter up. There goes the surge in. Edict gonna be uh, running out soon. And they're actually gonna be able to get away. Sharfik not really sure about what he was doing, but Mouse already backing off. Make sure that he doesn't have to decide just yet about what he was gonna do. We do, of course, have a risk polarity that's on cooldown because it was just used on the top lane, so they'll have to do without that. I mean, team fight wise, that's the thing that 3D is kind of relying on. Um, mouse sports have got more team fight other than that. Oh, Avalanche, Toss, Chronosphere, Sharfik. Oh, 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 that one level in Craggy Exterior. That just got him, that just saved his life. 
And there's a time walk away. In the meantime, Rubik dies in the middle lane, but we're gonna follow this. A toss hits. Oh, not nice backtrack. Oh, the split earth misses. Nice chase. Black gonna try to stay alive seven seconds before he can walk himself away. In the meantime, let's try to get the mid line anyway. Garrick up to got a double kill. It is the life steal that buys uh, buys back. And um, Rubik, of course, died there as well. Hope Missile is still gonna hit there up on uh, up on the Marcus, but he's gonna be fine. Three seconds before he has another a reverse polarity. Triple kill now for the Garrocopter as he picks up the Lashrak. Goroki still walking through the Edict. The Splinter was pretty nice. I mean, he hit on three, but apparently not good enough. Three kills going away of Fada, who is uh, pulling ahead there then. And, and actually, that fight for 3D Max, 3D Clan. Oh, God. This uh, was not good. They were too spread out. Who's it? <laughs> Oh, trouble. The home missile still gonna hit. Can he do more though? There is gonna be another rocket barrage and Lulik, even though a double damage when he has got bottle charge though, might be able to turn around and turn this around in total. He still has one more bottle charges. Double damage when is still up, but he doesn't want to try. In the meantime, his supports come in as well as Puss already got picked out on the side. Shockwave still gonna hit on Fada. He doesn't want to go for this just yet and it's Fada that backs off. Burrow strike from the side will still clear out the Magnus though, as Alex is gonna be running for his life because there's a surge up on the life stealer, surge up from the Rubik of course. Sand King, Split Earth will get him out of his uh, sandstorm, and he will be Burrow striking up into the high ground and the toss to the high ground as well as Dread is now stuck on there because his TP is on cooldown. Yay, that's fun. Radiance top tower is under attack. Well, Dread, what you gonna do now? What you gonna do now? <laughs> He's stuck there. <laughs> if that was worth killing off a Sand King, perhaps, perhaps. They, w they won't need their support, Lashrak. And he's like being their ward, because they don't have a ward on this riverside. Might as well toss up a, a hero and uh, just put it there, right? Yep, that will work out. That will definitely work out. We have the Armament of course up on Nexus. We already saw that earlier. It looks like he's gonna build for a Desolator next. Let's take a look at some of the more items, uh, more items that we haven't seen yet. Uh, we've got, of course, Kuroki being the supporting hero. He did pick up a uh, an urn and boots and a magic stick. And, of course, he's died six times. Uh, he was the one that gave first blood, and he hasn't been having a smooth game since. We have, of course, got Fado, who's been doing extremely well, but only since uh, for a while now. He did die four times in total, and he has picked up an overclub, so he's going to go for that BKB, just to make sure that, I mean, the the toss will still be there, and the avalanche will not stun him anymore, but he, and, you know... Oh, oh dear, there's a silence, and there's the Chronosphere, Vacuum, Chronosphere, the hits on two, and it's gonna be Sharpik that will be going down, there's a splitter from the Shrek, though, Sharpik, Mechanism keeps him up for now, he still wants us, does what he can, Burrows, I got about three! That was a solid Burrow site. That was four heroes down on the side of mouse. I cannot believe that Burrow site hit on all those heroes. That toss, that, oh god, that was brilliant play from 3D. And that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be trouble for them. We had of course a uh, a buyback from the Magnus a moment ago. He didn't even uh, yeah he did use his reverse polarity. <laughs> that's how they got all together. Burrow strike up on Kuroki telekinesis there as well solo, setting up the kills. Last one alive for Mouse Sports and this is actually might actually be Elena Rax going down. We do have the mechanism sorry mechanism I'm Sand King going being up again together with the. Uh, with the faces void, but do they really want to risk going down? I mean, there's two things you can do right now. Try to fight, try to push them back and win the fight, and then push them back, you know, success. With having the risk of losing that fight, and actually losing more than just one set of racks, or just giving it away. They do get the kill on Solo, though. Can they get more? There's no reverse polarity just yet. Mechanism helps out up on Mouse Sports. But the Garrocopter still goes down, another Burrow Strike comes through. Darkseer roll up on there as well, score towards the low ground. Epicenter on the low ground, but the hero is on the high ground. Shockwave going through, Faces Void does have a time walk, will be able to use it if he really wants to. Barracks still getting hit on. Right now I think it's time for 3D to take there and leave. Flat Cannon still helping out, there's a Rage up on Nexus, he actually turns around. Burrow Strike still hits up on Red, we do have a mechanism helping out there as well. Fada, <laughs> sorry, I mean Alex on the run for his life. He does have a burst strike up again in one second. We'll be able to help that to get away as we have got the vacuum stolen by Rubik and they're just sticking around for now. Barracks are still alive though. Looks like 3D. They just wanna they just wanna be a desolator is up. Jim of Crusade, of course, being taken over by Mouse Sports uh, from Mouse Sports. And the barracks will drop, they will just stay here. Stay here until 
Oh, Chronosphere, vacuum in there, Heads on, hits on three, that's one down, that's two down. Lushraka and Rubik being picked up, now also life here, but first celebrity, hits on three, though, Shockwave going through, but there's not enough damage. Mechanism helps out, Lolik will take a fall, last one alive is Tiny, Sharpik running for his life right now, does have a blink dagger, but can he actually get it? Toss still hits, he gets, he gets that kill actually, and Dread, he just bought back, comes in, gets a double kill for that one, might be able to get more, Espada is trying to turn it around, trying to go for Dread, Home missile is gonna hit. Doesn't matter though. Doesn't matter. It is actually past that runs away from that one. Fada gonna try to do some extra damage with his flat cannon. Might be able to kill Dread off once again. He's of course a pretty squishy support. One more hit away from dying and he will drop. The urn charge actually might be taking him over. Avalanche to make sure nobody chases it. But Dread goes down. He did get a double kill for that buyback. So that is something that he gets in return. Mouse boards, they hold on to their barracks. I cannot believe it. 3D, they really wanted to go for this, for this these barracks. It's a shame that they split up the damage a bit, but that's of course also because of the toss. But holy cow, that's just insane. I think that fight, that fight lasted long enough to have two reverse polarities and two chronospheres. Yep, and that happened. And they're not giving up. They feel like, you know what, we are ahead and we're gonna make sure that we stay ahead because if the game lasts too long, then we're gonna have a faces void and that faces void is gonna kill us all off. And so, uh, yeah, that's gonna be Illusions helping out. Fada's gonna be the target there. Open wounds up on him, though. But Missile still gonna slow down, or, or the uh, Coldar still gonna slow down. Next attack comes the Silence. Vacuum back in there. Is there gonna be anything more? Is there gonna be a Chronosphere? No, 12 seconds until that's up. Lolic taking a lot of damage. Has to stay alive because he has the Chronosphere. He has the reverse polarity in 16 seconds, but he did go down. Alex. Gonna be taking some damage, gonna be able to get away from now though. Burst like misses because the rage is there. There's a toss, that's a double kill going away of Sharpik. Now the Kronos here, and that's gonna be Rubik down. That's gonna be Nexus going down as well. Gem of Gem of Prusad on the floor once more. Nice split earth as it surges up on the black. Edict is just there, dressed thinking, you know what, I can just stand here and try to take some barracks. But, you know, he couldn't. <laughs> he couldn't, and he uh, doesn't get the barracks, and that's gonna be 3, 4, and 1. And again, 3D clan, they're just, I mean, it feels like they're just throwing their heads against that wall and the wall won't budge. Uh, though they do get a bit lower. Maybe next time they'll get them, but oh my god. That is just, um, that's quite insane. I'm not sure if that's worth the cost that they just made it, made it cost. I mean, the buybacks, the deaths. I mean, it started out being very much in favor for 3D. They at some point had 9 kills in favor and now it's only 7. So I guess uh, the trades were maybe slightly even, slightly in favor of mouse, but in, in theory, kind of even. Uh, we still have the net worth in favor of the lifestealer, who is highest up on there. He's on 10k, with uh, still his two teammates close behind. But one thing that we have Radiance to uh, keep in mind, uh, actually right now it, it's the first tower going down on the bottom lane only. Uh, mouse ports have not been able to do that yet, and by the t time, if they actually get the opportunity to do that still, that means that it's free gold going their way as uh, maybe 3D wants to go for this search away again from Puss, there's of course the ward up so they know what what they can expect if they go in we do have Roshan up still, he's just been sitting there in his hole cave canyon it's not really cave because it's not covered you can call it a canyon Yeah. okay so we're gonna go again Got the reverse polarity. What does Rubik have? He doesn't have anything. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Someone from the chat says, What a mess. And that is exactly what it was. Total mess. But 3D, it's just trying to brute force this. First attack hits up a sharp. Now open wounds up on Alex. Goldown coming down. Vacuum into a chronosphere. He only hits on two, though, but might be just enough. Sharpik already going down for the first one. Epicenter on the side. Is it gonna be enough? Nice burst like Solo by Solo. Mechanism helping out. Alex still alive. For now, Solo runs away from the fight as Dread trying to do what he can to survive up against Black, who's just trying to find some people. Nice bash up on Lolik, who's gonna have to run away from past here. In the meantime, Solo just coming back, we're striking everything. There comes the Rock of Barrage. Solo will take a fall there. That's the second hero going down for the rest. That's 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 the fourth hero going down. That's three heroes down on 3D. And that's gonna be another push in failing, and this time. They actually, Mouse Sports actually was able to take the fight a bit outside of their base, making sure that 3D doesn't, does not even come in range of these barracks to clean them out. And now I feel like 3D should definitely revise their strategy because this is not the way they're going to be able to win this game. They cannot keep throwing their fi their selves at that and just end, end up giving Mouse Sports kills and farm that they didn't have before. And 
Dyer's top Ooh. tower is under attack. It is, um, yeah, I, I, we've seen it before. We've seen before when teams felt like they, uh, they had got this, this pushing lineup, right? So, uh, and then they, they want to end it before a certain point in the game, w at which point they want to continue pushing. And, and then it makes sense. But I do feel like with the lineup that 3D had, and what are they doing? No, you're not. Are you really? Yes, they are. Middle lane. Surprise. They really like that middle lane, I have to say. But I don't feel like they have that kind of lineup that Radiant's won't be able to stand against Mouseport's late game. Maybe they're fearing their faces void too much, and to be fair, they have right a uh, right to fear that. But they do have a reverse polarity. They have a life Radiant's to carry them. A tiny carry should not be underestimated either. If he gets his items up, he actually picked up a four stop next to his uh, Blink Dagger. By the way, we already saw this earlier as well. The Blink Dagger up on the Magnus. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. But uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's quite surprising. They're gonna go for Roshan though. That's that's a good decision. It's a pit. Well, if it was a pit, that would mean that would indicate that. Radiance top tower. Oh wait a second. Attack. I will continue my thought train of thought about that later on. They know that they're there. Blink him a first polarity up on three! Toss there as well! Cold on coming down, doesn't matter though. Vacuum into the chronosphere of the epicenter. Three down! Is it gonna be four? That's a triple goal going the way of Alex. Now Nexus is on the run. Can he get away from this? Where is his teammate? Where is the tiny? He tries to blink himself away in the bottom lane, but we're gonna follow Nexus trying to run for his life. Actually, no. He turns around, gonna go for black. Now turns around to pass. Gonna try to run again. Maybe helps uh, with the creeps. Jumps himself into a creep, gets himself on full HP. Here comes Tiny again. Back back in helps him stand alive a bit longer against the homo missile but that still was his doom in the end now the rage is he gonna get bashed or is he gonna be able to get away armlet toggling for his life right now trying to stay alive he is the last hope of his team and he dies it is black that picks up the kill whoa i have to say that team fight that was everything for both teams mouse sports like their team fight potential is chronosphere and then an epicenter in there and a vacuum for to make everybody in the chronosphere and the cooldown. They had everything sorted. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Everything from them coming together. Now for 3D clan, their part of the team fight is you get a good reverse polarity, avalanche toss, Radiance and then all the AoE damage. And they actually got that too. But since it was them that did it earlier and most parts getting the chance to heal up, that ended up being making yeah, no difference to uh, to mouse anymore. I'm sorry for uh, for banging noises, as that's probably uh, someone like doing stuff on the top. Oh, I've never had before uh, top neighbors. I don't know how to call them. Oh well. Roshan goes down, Faces Void picks up the Aegis, no real surprise, as he now has got a Maelstrom as well, he's going towards the BKB, of course, one thing that is uh, quite annoying for Faces Void, as we saw in previous games as well, is being shut down in your own Chronosphere, so to avoid that, BKB is the choice. Let's see, Sand King has got himself a Blink Dagger as well, and the Barracks will be fine in time. BKB from the Garricopter Fada, having 2500 gold already again. I'm just checking if I missed any items. We did see the Gem of True Sight going back and forth. It's still the same one. We've got the um, Magnus still not having any new items. Lifestealer not having any new items. Lashrak still building towards his BKB and also no new items up on the Tiny. I mean, they just died, so I'm not really surprised to not see any new items up on there. Okay, go up on the life sooner. Okay, they they've changed their battle plan. They decided to go for uh, this uh, this tower. Oh, hello, this tower. Let's see if they can do that. Smoke up, actually. Central Dying's were being placed instantly. Is under attack. But Karaoke exclamation mark in this. They pinging this. They know that there's more there. They expect there's more there. Maybe they're gonna be able to trick someone into coming. But for now, there looks like Mouse are just gonna give the towers. I mean, it's pretty Dyer's simple. So far, Mouse Sports gone. has been able to survive even without the tower gold that they are getting, even without being behind on gold. Even though that's dropping back for uh, back again, of course, after the last couple of fights. Experience graph shows it a bit more clear, by the way. It's uh, about around 10k in favor of Mouse Sports. But um, yeah, why not give up your other tier tower either if you can get something in return for that? And that might actually be this thing. As uh, Burrow Strike makes sure that there's not going to be the nice solo going to pay for that one. <clears throat> for the attempt at denying. 
a blink burrow strike from Alex, making sure that uh, he knew someone was gonna come in. By the way, let me know if you can hear those banging sounds. It'd be interesting Radiant's to know that. As I said, a new house. I have a new house. Maybe that kind of banging. Banging. <laughs> interesting. Anyways. Uh, looks like double damage rune upon, uh, upon Lolik, but at this point of the game, I feel like mouse boards have the the better edge. It, it just and the, the reason is just that either 3D Max, they shouldn't have continued pushing like that and should just go for late game as well, or and um, so we are back. Uh, we didn't miss any extra action. Looks like 3D has decided to also wanted to go for some farm, as I said that they would need it if they want to go for late game. Mousepurs, on the other, other hand, feel like they don't want to wait for that to happen, for their opponents to get more farm. They feel like they're gonna ha getting ahead. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. And they're gonna try to go for this avalanche toss and force that back with <laughs> just some, some harassment. Making sure they're not gonna be going on for, uh, for HP. There's still, of course, the Burrow Strike, Epicenter waiting, Global Silence Dyer's waiting. I mean, Team Fight, if they get it off, it's in favor of Mouseports. Oh, they wanted to go for Chronos but the positioning of 3D is perfect. Rage goes through. Epicenter being missed. Oh, and this might be a good opening for 3D to take this, for 3D to try something. Avalanche, toss up on Fada. It is Charfic that already backs out again. But that's an Epicenter wasted. It might not be a Chronosphere wasted just yet, but. The combination is now not anymore there. Nice four staff, no burrow site gonna hit there. Homing missile still gonna run though. 3D dance around, making mouse ports waste their abilities. Tempting out mouse ports. There's gonna be Faces Void who time lapsing forward. The blink away is faster though. Hmm. This is a bit stupid. I, I moved house to get better internet, and what the hell is going on? I just dropped a couple of frames, so that's why I'm complaining. It's the first time that it happened today, but then still it should not happen at all. Because it sucks. 3D. Gonna go top. See if they can get something there. I mean, this is the last place where they still have a tier 2 tower standing, so maybe they're gonna get some extra gold there. Toss in on Kuroki. There comes the time walk forward from Rudy Avalanche. Kill. Magnus Shockwave doing the job, finishing it off. There's gonna be a tier 2 tower for free. 72 HP. Okay. It's pretty sad, pretty Dyer's nice. Top tower. There goes. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Can they do more though? I mean there is a there is a, a, a chronosphere still. Epicenter should be off cooldown again in a moment. Yeah. Oh, careful. Sharfik. Oh, a look. He gives it just enough time to get one hit up. Oh, the bash. So look, he's just there though. It is Solo that gets a Burrow Strike stolen from the Sand King. He is the one that will go down, but uh, it will actually give Sharfrick a time to escape. But will it actually have been enough? Reverse polarity hits only up on Black though. Burrow Strike hits on two on the side. Sharfrick will go down. Lolik will screw up to the high ground. Takes pass with him, however. Tries to TP himself out. Vacuum is, of course, on cooldown, so that will be safe for him to do as the rest know that they have to back out as well. I mean. It's, it's, it's very difficult to initiate on this team. You. you have to get them all in the reverse polarity, otherwise there will be something to stop them from... Uh, or something to, to stop you from going in, I should say. So in the most sports, we're back to where we started when the game stream started again. We're Radiant's back to the middle lane. Maybe they can get a tier 2 tower up on this. As a gold graph is still around 4k in favor of 3D, but then there again, there's still 3 towers left standing. Almost 2 again, by the way. Uh, that still left to be taken down by mouse sports. And then there's still one tower behind, because that mid-tier 3 is of course also down on their side. So they get the tower back off, probably gonna go for the tier 1 tower, tier 2 tower on the bottom lane. Just getting that gold up. Just making sure 3D is gonna be locked in place and not gonna have any place to go right now. That would be the ideal thing. Farming up on the jungle as well. 
and not just a jungle, the jungle of 3D. So again, limiting their, their space to uh, to get some farm. Oh, this is pretty ballsy actually. They are pushing forward. And they're gonna be surprised by Mousepurs from behind if they continue going, because Mousepurs, they see every moment of this. They have got that ward there up on that river. It was almost gonna vanish, but still, they saw them going there, and they go. They have the smoke. They're gonna go for this. They know where they are. Smoke up also. Invisibility through actually up on the Titan. There goes the smoke. They wanna fight also for Roshan, of course. Next fight is gonna be that. Both teams know exactly where the opposing team is, or, well, no, let me rephrase that. Most players know where their, their opposing team is. 3D, I don't think they know. Magnus has got a life seer in him. Now they know, now they see them, now they go. Are they gonna go though? BKB up, toss a steal there though. Will there be reverse polarity? There he goes. Hits on three, jumping out from Nexus. Can they get something done? Nobody going down just yet. There goes the cooldown and the Coronosphere, Sharfik and Lolik will be the two that get picked off already. On the sidelines we see Alex going down, Burl Strike being sold by Solo who is on the run, very low life threat. Not low life because he is dead. We have Solo still on the run and Nexus gonna run as well as another fight was taken convincingly by Mouse Sports. With only, only Alex going down on the sidelines to Solo who actually was able to TP himself out into safety. Gem of True set up on the Rubik, so that's something that they got out of that. But Mouseports now with, uh, well, three heroes still on the sidelines. Are they going to try to force out some buybacks, which can, which can happen still? Or, more importantly, going to try to take down a tier 3 tower. And they know, of course, reverse polarity is off cool on cooldown. That is, on cooldown indeed. So they have got some chance of team fight potential from 3D just gone because that reverse polarity is basically all they have together with the combination avalanche toss, but they will have that all the time. Call down, solo, going down, Rock of Barrage, Sharfik, trouble for him, still ma managed to get a kill up on Kuroki, as now Nexus comes in, wanna go for Black, but Black, he is backing off as well. On the sidelines, Lolik can try to get a Skewer toss, doesn't reach it, but the Skewer to the low ground, oh, it doesn't hit! There comes a blink up to the high ground, though, Home Missile coming up, BKB make sure no splitter is gonna hit Black, Black is on the way out, Black is running for his life right now, but a toss back will make him back into enemy territory. And there he goes, Sharpie picking up the kill, dominating streak on Black ended, and the tier three tower still stands, even though on a bit lower life. Can they get something going right now? There is a buyback up on Black. And uh, there is uh, no buyback actually up on uh, Kuroki, but he doesn't really need to buy back. They still have the epicenter. They still have the dark seer wall. I don't think that mouse sports is gonna be Gonna be all too scared for their barracks. Gonna depend on. I mean, Sharfik, he's actually going for Mata style, so a bit of a more carry potential. But still, no Agonims, and that's a buyback. That's all they came for, and they back off. Wasting some money up on Black. That's all they wanted to get, and they got it. Can they get something done? I mean, th I mean, this is this is the kind of thing that they have to do, though. They have to pick off a hero or two, without being uh, forced into a full tier, two, full five on five team fight, because they won't win that. And then try to to push ahead based on that. But then there's gonna be buybacks. There's gonna be an Aegis soon as well on one of the teams. And there's the massive difference in team fight potential from the teams. As well as, of course, the difference in uh, in gold now. I mean, we had the life stealer being uh, highest from everybody for a while. Oh, burst like it's on solo. Who missed it as well? There's a blink in. First player he misses though. Oh my God, Lolik, that's not gonna be good. This could be game. Just be based on that. Solo goes down. Dread goes down. Sharfie gets hit by the epicenter and the burst like and goes down. As Nexus is the last one alive for his team. And he is running for his life, he will have to give up the chance to go for a, a Roshan. He actually has to fight this, and I might be able to kill a Black. Black, who... Fate finds me. He did have a Protosphere, he's gotta pay for that though, but yeah. <laughs> that shouldn't have happened. But that's the team wipe going the way of Mouse Sports. I can't believe that he actually killed him off. I, don't, I think that Black was a bit surprised by that as well. It has to be. Uh, but yeah, as we already know, that there is no buyback. Up on uh, up on a tiny because he already just bought back. There is a buyback up on the Magnus, but with his reverse polarity down, he's not going to be able to make that big of a difference. So this middle lane of racks, I think that uh, 3D clan. I hope that they're not too attached to it because they're going to lose it. Fortification goes off to try and slow them down, give people a chance to get their heroes back up. 
Has but fallen. the bearings will die. I'm not going as fast as if Black was here, but still going down pretty okay. Okay, Steve Fala, of course, having uh, plenty of damage. Finish up, finish up his butterfly, by the way. Melee Rex destroyed. Now they back off with everybody being back up again apart from Nexus. Go saps are up on Kuroki. Helping out staying alive against that life stealer. If he is actually alive. Roshan's still up though. I mean they could have gone for Roshan but opted to go for Rex. I don't blame them. Rex is really nice to have right now. Especially if you're if you're opposing Rex on the same lane misses a tier three, so you have got some extra force to push back uh, constantly push back the lane to not have if the lane pushes out your thread uh, your Rex in, in danger. But they could have also opted to go for a Roshan, didn't do it. And uh, might have to pay the price, but depending on how they're going to do it, they still have a Chronosphere. They, st they have an Epicenter. They could try to do this. But now also Garen comes picking up a Chrysalis. Rage up. Roshan going down fairly fast. Maus know that something's going on. I'm not sure if they are aware that this is already going so fast, though. Miss or Yeah, Roshan's already dead. And that's going to be- Oh! Black jumps in! Lifesteader still picks up the Agent, but Sharfik, he is done for vacuum. Hit still as Nexus will have to use the Aegis trade away. Fada unstoppable as he got one of the kill. There goes a Chronosphere from Solo actually. But uh, doesn't, well does pick up two. Split Earth coming in as well. So our first polarity hits on two. Here comes Nexus. They might be able to get something done here. But no, they back up. Pearl Strike cleans out Lolic together with the Rock of Mirage. Now Nexus again. I feel like this is a theme. He's trying to run for his life again. He's being silenced, he's being earned, he's being cursed. He is a burrow strike. He is dead, I think. Oh, raging turn around. Alex though goes into a sandstorm and there comes Black. This time he's gonna get the bashes. This time he gets the kill. He actually gets a double kill in total. And this even though he won't get Roshan, because Roshan is of course dead, Nexus still got that. They will be able to get a Rex uh, number two on the mid lane, and they might actually be able to get more. Uh, even though I don't think they're going to try to go for Rex because uh, they still have their tier 2 tower standing Radiance so they might just go for tier 4s depending on how they feel. No buybacks are going to be happening uh, anytime soon. They're indeed goes the ranged Rex and they're indeed going to go for the tier 4s. Let's Radiance see how far they can get. Black of course with that uh, with that, <laughs> that Mask of Madness will be able to, back to uh, hit those towers pretty fast if he actually activates it, which he doesn't. But I don't think they should have to worry all too much Radiance as the sec tower. second tier 4 tower goes down as well. Now he can use it. And a Midas, uh, and a Mask of Madness, no. Link forward. And there goes a nice split earth and a score. That's gonna be Alex going down. Avalanche Toss still going through, but can they actually defend this? Do they, are they gonna try? Yes, they are. Lightning just pushing through. There comes a vacuum trying to help out. There's no reverse polarity. 60 seconds for that, but Lulik has to stay alive if he wants to try and do that. Dread will still go down. B can be activated on black as he is able to help pick up Magnus. Now Sharfy gonna get bashed, gonna get bashed again. Chronosphere. Yeah, gonna hold uh, Rubik in place for later, and that should be game. That should be GG. But first player to still call, but uh, is called, uh, is done, and the GG is called. There we go. What a messy game that was. What an awkward game that was, and what a fun game that was in a way as well. 3D clan not able to get three points out of this engagement. I really thought they had it. I really thought they had it. They looked so strong at the start, but they they let the game go on too long, or they they bashed their heads against the wall that wouldn't budge too long. And Mouse Sports ended up uh, winning based on that. So uh, Mouse Sports taking on three points for Starlighter season five. This was the last game of day number two. We are um, I'm gonna jump myself out of this game. I'm gonna make some VODs out of this as well as uh, playing some commercials. Thank you for watching. Sorry for dropping out there. I just needed to do that. Otherwise, you wouldn't have a view funny viewing experience. I'm gonna hopefully fix it on Monday when uh, I can actually call my ISP again. Because, I mean, this is a new ISP. That shouldn't happen. Anyways. Um, thank you for watching. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my YouTube, which is youtube.com slash Gaming, And any other site that you can think of as in oh no not any other type of site that you can think of just uh, Twitter Facebook and Twitch all under the name of Shiver Gaming so they just just type in the website and then slash Shiver Gaming and then you can uh, like subscribe follow or follow there you go if you want to anyway that was it hope you had a fun time watching the end screen ha and watching this game was that it was a very enjoyable game yeah it was Anyway, stick around if you want to watch some commercials and maybe some own gameplay depending on if I'm actually going to do that or not. I don't know yet. Uh, don't go anywhere.